Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be showing some of my favorite tombstone methods using extruded insulation foam. To get started, I've cut down a 2 inch sheet of foam into a 16 by 24 inch rectangle, and I'm going to lay out some guidelines to help me transfer the design to my foam. Once I've finished my sketch, I cut out the tombstone shape with a small saw and cleaned up the edges with a sanding sponge. I knew that I wanted to include some cemetery symbology on this tombstone, so I'm going to start by adding a small relief for the addition of a carving. So I searched the shop to find something that's about the size I'm looking for, and used a marker to trace out the shape. And then a final pass with a compass to make sure that it was a perfect circle. With the circle drawn, I grab my rotary tool with a carving bit and my homemade acrylic platform. This allows me to span a larger area when I'm removing foam without the cutting bit rocking to the left or right. I built the platform by gluing a Dremel cutting guide to a piece of acrylic with a 2 inch hole in it. I turn my rotary tool to a medium speed to keep from melting the foam and I start to carve away the foam to create the recess for my carved embellishment. It's important to take your time, stopping frequently to clear out the bits of foam until you've removed all the foam inside of your circle. With the recess cleared out, I take a bit of Gorilla Glue to adhere the pointing finger to the tombstone and place a weight on it while it dries. While I wait for the glue to dry, I cut out this epitaph on my vinyl cutter. Now, if you don't have access to a vinyl cutter, you could print out your epitaph on paper and trace the design onto your foam. I tape off the edges with painter's tape before lightly dusting the surface with some spray paint to transfer my design. Once I've removed the stencil, I switch to a smaller bit to allow me to carve the more detailed letters of my epitaph. It's important to keep your bit depth to around an eighth of an inch because any deeper will cause the foam to melt and collect around the bit. If you've never used the cutting guide attachment, you'll notice it has two windows, a small one and a large one. The large window is the best way to see where your bit is and to help you stay within the lines of your design. I always start in the middle of a letter and work toward the outside to help get better edges, being sure to take my time and cleaning out the bits of foam as I go.
To add a bit more H to the tombstone, I'm going to use a razor blade and a rasp to cut in some cracks and wear. I like to create a V-shaped channel with the blade and then use the edge to pick away at the foam. This helps to make the cracks look a bit more ragged and lifelike. With the carving and epitaph complete, I'm going to add some texture to the entire tombstone using a spray bottle of water and a blowtorch. Spray down your tombstone, creating as many droplets as possible, and then use the blowtorch to melt the surface of the foam to create the texture of old stone. With the texturing done, it's time to coat the entire piece with a gray-tinted Drylock Original Masonry Sealer. If you can't find Drylock, you can achieve a similar look by adding playground sand into exterior latex paint. Drylock already has a sandy texture, but I like to pounce over the entire surface to create even more texture and to hide my brush strokes. With the painting done, we can move on to weathering. For this tombstone, I'm using black and raw sienna acrylic paint for most of the grime and a moss green color to create some variation. You could also use brown, gray, or even white for this step. It's completely up to you and the look you're trying to achieve. I've thinned out my acrylic paint in water and will spray a wash of paint onto the tombstone, allowing the surface to dry between passes until the desired look is achieved. I like to keep a second spray bottle with water nearby just in case the wash is too heavy in spots. Oops, sorry about that. Looks like we're missing a clip where I filled in the epitaph with the paint left over from the spray bottle. At this point you can stop, but I like to do a light dry brushing with a lighter color to help soften the aging and give it a dusty sun bleached look. Really work the edges of the letters and any details you want to draw attention to. If you're new to dry brushing, start on the back side of your tombstone until you get a feel for it. Then you can move on to the front. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you'd like to see more videos like these, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and click the notification bell so you'll be alerted every time we upload a new one. And until next time, happy haunting.